welcome back baseball fans to the final elimination video of the season and it's eliminating the LA Dodgers the team that won the World Series the only team that's ever really happy the other 31 clubs are disappointed but the Dodgers did win the whole thing it was a resilient team with I would say not many weaknesses and a steady team that got consistent offensive performance a dominant ace and an amazing bullpen those are good remedies to win a world series when you look at the numbers the 277 team batting average is in a nice spot the 374 team era in a year where pitching is is really dominating isn't really that bad it might be a little high for a, a dodger team that has high expectations um they would score 229 runs give up 203 10 games over 500. Um, they hit 63 home runs in 46 games. And when you look even closer at those home runs, you see they're a nice mix throughout the lineup. You know, Garvey had the World Series MVP performance to pile onto his magnificent regular season. Uh, was a runner up in the regular season MVP to uh, Willie Stargell and Mike Schmidt, who had better numbers than him. But he gets the World Series MVP and has the last laugh, I guess you could say. Um, and then, but you see his teammates Baker and Smith, and even Willie Horton batted eighth for this team, and had seven homers and 18 RBIs in his abbreviated season as a DH. Ron Say, Davey Lopes, all throughout the lineup you had production. Um, batting average is all there. Kirk Gibson's first year in LA with a 328 card hit. 328. So that's a huge get to add that to a World Series team. They don't have Fernando Valenzuela from the 81 squad. They got Kirk Gibson instead is the way it kind of worked out. Um, and then when you look at the struggling bats at the bottom of the hitters, they're just extra players. Alex Trevino, Jim Norris, not a big deal. Your utility players are struggling. Lopes's average is down a little bit, but his own base is up and he steals bases. Ron Say's batting average is down slightly. He's got a nice on base and a nice slugging. So when you look at the pitching, you know, Don Sutton is the guy. Uh, he had the three World Series starts, won two out of three of them. Um, got rocked in the, and they got rocked in game one, and then he won game four and game seven with some support. Uh, notice only three complete games, though, in 14 start in 14 decisions, which is a little low for Sutton. A, he's a starter seven. Might be because of the fantastic bullpen. Look at the four top ERAs are all out of the bullpen. Five wins, two losses, 12 saves, and that's like 110 innings with an ERA below two. So they did the uh, saving of the Dodgers season. As Hooten, Bert Hooten had uh, one of his World Series starts, he threw a shutout or uh, was part of a shutout. There's like eight and a third innings of a shutout game. And then he got lit up in another World Series game. And then his year at eight numbers is ERA is over five. And Rick Sutcliffe had a good regular season, but he had a terrible World Series start. So his ERA is over five. And then Jim Umbarger only made the team because they needed a left-handed starter and there was nobody out there. The Dodgers lost Jerry Royce in expansion. They lost Fernando in expansion. They lost Doug Rowell to retirement. So they got to find a left-handed pitcher to pitch in this rotation, and maybe, as I, my memory serves, they might be bringing in Rick Honeycutt soon. I think he pitched for the Dodgers in the early 80s or the mid 80s. Um, just a great year, and uh, they were outplayed by the Angels in the first five games of the World Series, but when they had to in game six, they rallied late, won that game six, and then came out Blazing in Game Seven, and it was a it was a wrap. They dominated in the Angels in the latter parts of Game Six and all of Game Seven, and that was enough to win the World Series, four games to three. And so now we're going to take a look at the Dodger stack, and we're going to take out their 1978 players from the stack here. And uh, 78 would be a good year, of course, for them. They uh, 
were in the World Series that year. Um, actually, at the the front and back of this timeline, they're in World Series. They lose in 78. They win in 81. They are also very good in 80. But the Astros won that division that year. So we're going to see if we got the eight guys here. Okay. Let's see. Well, that's, yeah, there's definitely four you want. Um, it's not bad. You don't have too many or too few. And a lot of these guys have futures going into the early 80s. These are older players, a lot of them. But before we analyze that, let's see the 12 guys who are going to make up next year's team. They're going to go with eight hitters and four pitchers. So, the eight hitters. Huh. Well, so they got... So Willie Horton was the, uh, you know, it's funny, like, this guy just, like, was ignored in the draft because he's a, D, a D, uh, D, DH only, no defense. Nobody wanted him. And then the guy had 29 home runs. Granted, it's in a lot of plate appearances, 279, but to find a full-time DH like that for a, a team of a playoff pedigree like the uh, Dodgers, I mean, that's, that's a nice get. You know, it's not an amazing card at all. Uh, by any stretch, but it's a nice get for a playoff team. Uh, it it unfortunately locks your DH spot up though, and you got a catching platoon here with Sochin Trevino, totally fine. There's your MVP of the World Series who just kept banging one fives and one sixes, in the in five times in seven games, and yeah, that'll do it for you. Lopes best year, there you go. Say's best year coming back. They don't have a shortstop, but they do have two outfielders. They have Baker in left. And they're going to have Gibson in center. And Gibson was a real steal because he really shouldn't be here yet. You know, he's a Tiger and supposed to be in Detroit through 84 and get a Tiger World Series ring. But the transaction was done to, just to get uh, him in L.A. because we know he, he does the uh, 88 uh, tenure in L.A. with a big World Series and, and all that. So that's why the Dodgers went after him. The Dodgers don't have Fernando Valenzuela at all. They're not going to have him. Arizona got his rookie card, and they're going to hold him to that for dear life. So, you know, it's there's pros and cons to all of this. And now the eight pitchers. Well, front and back. So the days of Tommy John are over, and Doug Rowell are over, and perhaps Bird Hooten. I think Hooten comes back. But Sutcliffe is uh, 79... Rookie of the year, I think. Then he struggles after that. He he finds himself again with the Cubs in '84, but that's a few years away. We're not close to that yet. Goes 16 and one for the Cubs in '84. We're not even close to that. So Sutton and Sutcliffe, the Suts could be the top two dogs on this team. And then you at the back end, you have Castillo and Hal. These are those double printed 1980 cards. When they uh, so this is what they in case you're wondering your 1980 Steve Hal and Bobby Castillo and all the pitchers uh, their hits started in the four column right there the entire league was that way and then the Stratomatic fans complained about it and so they sent out uh, reprints and when they did they moved the hits all to all the columns you see this. And so you could send away, these are very rare to find these, by the way, but you could get these and add them to your league. And so I could just keep them together. I keep both cards together in one so I don't get them lost, so they don't get lost. But any event, there you go. It's, uh, Dodgers looking great. And uh, next year, 79 to 82, They'll have a 81 World Championship team plus an 80 team that was very good. 82 is not so much. 83, the Dodgers win the National League West. So they're still, they still have some good stuff left in them. Let's see what the Dodgers do with their 8 1978 players. All right, back with the 1978 Dodger 8 players to analyze. 
we're going to begin with Raphael Landestoy, who really was a seldom used reserve player, would back up mostly at shortstop to um, Bill Russell, and would play mostly for the Astros. He did play for the Dodgers, I and mean, the Dodgers in 77, Astros, Reds, back to the Dodgers in 84. Really, he's a golden age. <laughs> I always say the golden age is stretched from 77 to 84, and that's where Raphael Landestoy's career goes. So isn't that kind of neat? Uh, 79 has a nice card. That's probably his best card with the Astros. The 80 card's not that bad either. He's a good defensive second baseman. 81's pretty forgettable, as is 82, 83, 84. The, the bottom line is he's going on waivers. And he has to have a card in 79, and by plate appearances, he will. 319 plate appearances, you don't have to check. You know that card exists. So he's going on waivers with a 79 card. Because you know Bill Russell's going to be their shortstop, and it's a higher priority anyway. Next player, Jim Norris, another utility player who really didn't matter too much one way or the other. He just filled a roster spot. Lost a lot of his playing time to Willie Horton because Horton had power. And uh, Norris was good in 78, though, with Cleveland. Has a couple more nice years, 79 and 80. These are okay years. He's missing the power, though. Uh, he's a left-handed bat. Again, he's sort of like Landestoy. He'll give you waivers in 79, but he'll find a team. Someone will pick him up. Could be the Dodgers. But that's a typical wavered guy, a guy who would bounce around. Not a guy you would want probably starting, but a guy who would be in a platoon, defensive replacement, good base runner, make the roster as a, as a reserve. All right, next up is going to be Bill Russell and the long-tenured Bill Russell from 69 to 86 would become their manager. And I believe it's the entire time. Yeah, it's the entire time. Interesting case here for Bill Russell. So sure, obviously he'll be a keeper, but one thing to consider when you have a player who's like a lifetime player for a team and he's not uber talented, he's not a cornerstone, you know, bedrock player that you you think of as the team's best player. Oftentimes a guy like that gets put on waivers and nobody else in Major League Baseball picks him up and so the Dodgers resign him that way particularly at shortstop position. Um, in the fall summer league, we saw the Yankees putting Gene Michael, their longtime shortstop on waivers, and the Pirates put Gene Alley, their longtime shortstop on waivers, just because they had so many more valuable positions to keep. First basemen and outfielders and starting pitchers, you know, guys like Roberto Clemente and Richie Hebner, and the Yankees had Stottlemyre and Bobby Mercer and guys like that, so. So for now, let's put Bill Russell as a keeper. But if we have too many other keepers, we can push him in uh, into waivers. And the other thing about Russell, the analysis doesn't really matter too much uh, year to year. He's going to give you a very similar performance. And you might want to pick the best defensive performance to use. If you can find him as a two at shortstop, I would take him. Though you may not. It might just be a three or a four, which would not be very good, but there you are. Next is Reggie Smith, and this is a guy that you typically leap over uh, Bill Russell for because you're going to get tremendous production. He's got the ball, so they don't have a Cardinal or Dodger hat for him here. But we got a 78 card, and oh boy, yeah, he's, he isn't done by any stretch. Uh, it kind of falls off after 80. But uh, 80's a heck of a year. 79's a heck of a year um, in limited playing time. He was injured. But the good news is he got an all-star <laughs> nod when he was injured in 80. Uh, 322. He's a two outfielder again. And a 2E2 two -E -two outfielder. Which is very remarkable that he's a 2E2 two -E -two outfielder in 80. When in, back in the early 70s with Boston, he was often an E16, an E14, an E10 outfielder. So for him to be an E2 suddenly, and a, a rangy two with a minus three arm, this 80 card is fantastic. That's the card to take. And even in his last year in 82, that's a nice batting average there, and nice power for the Giants at age 37. So 
Reggie Smith will play all the way through to his 82 card, but the 80 card will most likely be the one taken by the Dodgers. That would be, the of these four hitters, that 80 Reggie Smith is the best. All right, next the four pitchers, beginning with Burt Hooten, and he'll be coming back, I'm predicting, before we click on this. Started with the Cubs, I believe, and then ended up with the Dodgers, and then a year in Texas late. But yeah, real good stuff still happening for him. 79, he was second in Cy Young in 78. 79, he's almost as good. 80, not so much. The strike year of 81, he's fantastic. He really is. Um, maybe that limited number of games helped him. And then after that, not so much. He eventually transitions to the bullpen. But yeah, that 81, that card's going to get in the league. So I'm looking at two cards I want to draft right now. I want the 81 Hooten and the 80 Reggie Smith. And they're in different years, even more of a bonus. The Dodgers looking great now with these comebackers, these, these guys coming back. Okay, Jim Umbarger. Congratulations, Jim Umbarger. You got yourself a World Series ring because the Dodgers signed you because you threw a baseball with your left arm. That's right, Jim Umbarger throws left-handed. He's got like a good year in here somewhere. Yeah, 76. 76 Jim Umbarger. Talk about this year. That's a nice year there. A 315 ERA and 197 innings, 30 starts. After that, not so much. His final year was just at age 25, so he must have had some arm problems. We got this card in the league on the Dodgers. It was like the last starting pitcher we could find who threw left-handed with a 155 whip, and the Dodgers hid him in the three spot of their rotation. And by hiding him, check this out down here, by hiding him, the, one of the rules I have is that you have to have a left-handed starter pitch one of the first three games of a series. So it's Sutton, Hooten, and then the left-hander, and then Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe is better than Umbarger, but Umbarger pitches left-handed, so he had to pitch the third game of all the Dodger games. Maybe that's why the regular season record wasn't that great. Tom Bruno, an excellent long man, was brought in uh, when Umbarger struggled. So Bruno got a lot of assist in helping the Dodgers win those starts. But Umbarger is retired. He got a 25-year-old, got a World Series ring, and this kooky fun carryover league. There you go. And that's, that's, the, that's the fun of this carryover league, seeing these weird sort of um, occurrences. Okay, two more pitchers to do, and that'll be the end of all eliminations. Uh, Tom Bruno, previously mentioned. He's got a couple years that are actually pretty good in the bullpen, I believe. No, just the one year? Yeah, it's just the one year in 78. I thought he had two. Does this card make waivers in 79? That's for the Cardinals. Let's go check it out. I don't remember it. So you have to look at the 70, the St. Louis Cardinals 79 and see if Bruno was there. On the basic, he's not. And no. So he has to be retired. If Stratomatic doesn't print your card in the following year, then you have to go in retirement. So he's gone. And the last guy is Terry Forster. And he had a nice long career with the White Sox, Dodgers, Braves. So he's right in the middle of it right here, I think. So there's Terry Forster. And so his Dodger tenure was from 78 to 82, right in the meat of this uh, league where we're at. So 78, the brilliant card, uh, he was the GOAT in Game 6 of the World Series, if you follow that. He gave up, uh, he inherited a tie game, and then a, uh, the Angels ended up getting a three-run lead. He put three or four men on base. He was the GOAT in Game 6, which could have cost him the series. They came back and won it. And then in Game 7, Forster is on the mound of the ninth inning as they clinch it. So, if it, you know, I mean... If there was a World Series celebration, Terry Forster would have been on the mound in that particular set, particular scenario. So that's kind of a cool thing to think about, too, when you're doing these leagues. So Forster got his uh, hero moment 
in 78 anyway. 79 struggles with injuries, as does 80. I'm not sure if 81 and 82, 82 exists. And that card would be worth taking for the Dodgers. It's a very good card. Matter of fact, even if 81 exists, I ain't, I'm not worried about it. It's going to be 82. I'm just going to put Forster as a keeper. I mean, these are just so obvious because they're in different years. So I know they like Forster in 82. They like Hooten in 81. They like Reggie Smith in 1980. You can't have anything better. Than, you know, when they're, they're all in different years, it leaves you so much versatility. So you're not locked in. So those three key guys will be keepers in those years. And with Forster and Steve Howe in the bullpen, that's going to make it for another strong bullpen for the Dodgers. All they got to do is replace Tom Bruno. And they got to find a left-handed starter. I mentioned earlier that might be Rick Honeycutt. Because Seattle still hasn't... Uh, Rick Honeycutt starts his, year with the, starts his career with the Seattle Mariners, and they still haven't gotten him out of AAA yet because he had a slow start to his career. So he might just go straight from Seattle to the Dodgers for all we know. When we're said and done here, the Dodgers have comported properly to the correct number of keepers, waivers, and retires. They do have the four, two, and two, which means that Bill Russell does become a keeper. And I said, the beauty of Bill Russell, he can go in any year. So these other three guys are locked into those years. Bill Russell, you could take from 79, 80, 81, or 82. It doesn't matter too much. The performance is pretty similar. So it's four, two, and two, which means that every team it's going to go into the postseason, and we know right here that we have 151 keepers. And 59 guys on waivers, and 46 guys on retirement. So, when you look at the what has to happen in the... Uh, trade carousel the league has 23 guys that teams like to keep and they're not going to be able to keep them and so five of them will have to go on waivers 18 will go on retirement but what usually happens is the waiver class guys are really bad so they'll go to retirement first and then most of these keepers will go into the waiver class so most likely 18 of these 23 will end up here and then five waiver guys will end up over there. But um, that's great news for the league. You always want to be under 64 retirements. That's the key to the whole thing. So 46 players do not have a Stratomatic card, period. That's good news because if it was over 64, you couldn't have every team retire two players because one, you know, you'd have to have. 64 divided by 32 is 2. So if you had more than 64, one or two of these teams would have to retire three players, for instance, which means they couldn't keep the proper amount or waive the proper amount. And the league would have to addend that somehow. You'd have to compensate a team based on draft order or something like that. Uh, it's never happened for me. So as I've been playing this carrier league for 2005, 17 years with various leagues. I've never had uh, more than 64 guys ever retire in the following year. It's always been a number less than that. So that's, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I would hope would happen when I started this so long ago. And I've been running that back very successfully for a long period of time now. I'm very happy how that worked out. So, that's it tonight for eliminating the last team, the Dodgers. Uh, when we resume, we're going to do a fun little video where we're putting the final cards back into the 1978 box to complete that card box set and closing that box set uh, and putting that in storage for quite a long bit of time. That's a fun video to watch. Look for that soon. Thanks for checking this out, folks. I appreciate all the comments. It's fun doing this stuff. I hope you're enjoying it. We'll see you next time.